Okay guys, a few people have asked me for a bit more in depth look at this six wheeler that I put together a couple of months ago. Now, I've had this six wheeler probably some time now. It originally was an electric. I think it's uh, HGP601 I believe. And uh, it was, you know, a good crawler, very powerful. You know, I used it a few times and I got fed up with it. But I think it came from Banggood. And when I first bought it, obviously it came with plastic chassis rails and whatever. But as you know, Banggood were doing the parts so cheap that I actually managed to buy all the metal frame parts for it. So I bought all the differentials or the axles. They're locked actually. Um... Yeah, I bought all them, uh, and I bought the main chassis rails and whatever. And, you know, it sat on my shelf for a long while. But I bought myself, I saw the video that, uh, that Dennis Dempsey put up there with the, um, the 407. And I thought, oh, that looks fantastic with that engine in. So I thought, I'll buy one, see if I can do the same. So I bought one. But it got tied up in customs for ages. So while I was waiting, I already had the engine. So I thought to myself, well, maybe, you know, I could have a go at fitting it in here. And to be honest with you, it went in quite well because it's quite a nice wide frame. I only had to make some uh, very like, small engine mounts in here. It wasn't, you know, that much work. Um, but yeah, that all kind of went in. Got the Revo gearbox all in there, same little plates I made and the same servos each side. And it all kind of tallied up, you know, worked out okay. But um, I was having, you know, a lot of problems with the engine. I just could not get the engine to run right. Um, so what I did was I experimented with different exhausts and stuff like that. And I still couldn't get it, the thing to run right. I changed the needle and put a fire needle on because it was like a tap on and off. You couldn't like really get to tune it well so um you know even then it, sometimes it was run all right but it was very low on power and you know i don't think it was revving anywhere near thirteen thousand rpm um you know it was probably about if you're lucky about six thousand it was it was really horrendous but then as you know from my videos it blew out the two bearings in the bottom of the comrod which you know, looked like it had done a lot of damage to the inside of the engine, but actually the comrade had been knocking on like the sump or the bottom of the casting, but not really done that much damage. So you've all seen my uh, video where I've actually bushed it now. So I've got rid of the bearings because they're just not man enough for it, you know. It might it may be all right if it's a desk toy or you got, you know, and you start now and again, you just rev it, but you know, this thing here has got, it's six wheel drive. It's got three lock diffs on it. So there's a hell of a lot of drag on it, you know, and that's a tiny little engine really, you know, it's quite small. But anyway, get back to the engine. Once I had rebuilt the engine and made that bronze bush for it and everything like that, it seemed to run a lot better, but it was still kind of not really revving how it should. So I took off this, I mean, I don't know if anyone's seen what this is like inside. I mean, that is what they call a boost box. But, you know, I can't really see. That looks so restricted to me um, that I couldn't really see that doing a job. So what I did was I made a new stub to come out of the head. It's screwing now. New stub. And I made a new pipe. I actually bent that pipe up and a silencer and I put a thin collar around here. It's got a little, if you can see, it's got like a, a cut in it there. Let me see it. And just in there, I've got a screw in there that clamps the whole thing together on there and that clamps that exhaust on there. Well, guys, as soon as I put that on, it absolutely transformed the engine. I mean, I would say it's almost double the power of the engine and it runs clean. Okay, it still does tend to overheat a little bit, but nothing like it was. I mean, it was horrendous. You know, you couldn't even run like a minute with it without having to richen it up and all that. Now I can run it for sort of five minutes, and I'll just, if I'm doing a bit of crawling or whatever, something like that, I can just detect the engine sort of going off a little bit. 
you can hear it, when it gets hot it starts to race a little bit so you've only got to richen it up like an eighth of a turn something like that and she comes back to a lovely idle and you're back on full power again now I've got a header tank on this so I mean literally I'm running that tank and that tank and in the whole of those two tanks I think I only have to richen this needle up maybe twice I think the header tank is very good on here because you know when you look at the outlet of the tank there it's got to drag that fuel all the way up to the carburetor here and when this tank got low again I was having problems with it sort of misfire and not running right so this is a, a helicopter uh, header tank so I've hooked that up and put that there and that has actually improved things like the fuel it runs that right out so it runs two tanks of fuel straight out and not a problem I must stress I put filters in here because I kept having problems with this getting blocked so I've got two filters uh, on there and I've got to say the last couple of times I've run it it's just started up and it's run them two tanks okay maybe I just had to reach enough very slightly but it's got so much power and it runs so nice you know it is, it is a lovely model to run I've put a little electric fan on here because I've said before the main fan, like you can see here, look, where well, I've been running it, you get a little bit of mist on that belt, which I, I'm really going to have to look into because it seems to be coming out of the rear bearing. I don't know, and maybe the front one. Um, it's got two very small, thin seals in there, uh, and I'll put them in with a tiny little bit of um, gasket sealer, not a lot, but somehow it's still managing to leak. So I'm going to have to look into that when I can. The other thing I did was I made a tiny little catch tank in there. Can you see it with the two tire wraps over it? Now that catch tank was getting full up because it was so much oil, so much bypass from that piston. But the more I run it, it seems to be running itself in. And although I do have to empty that tank after every time I run it, it doesn't actually, you know, it's not so much oil in there as it used to be. And you really do need a catch tank on these because otherwise it goes all over the model, all underneath, and it, it makes a right mess of it. But, you know, like I say now, I think the biggest thing is this exhaust, which gives the engine some power. But I wouldn't recommend doing this before you actually do the mod on the big end. If you do that bronze bush in the big end, not in the bottom of the com rod, you'll have a really good, strong engine there. And I think that's, that's what it it really needs I am thinking of running the oil pipe up and back into you know here because having to keep taking that off and greasing it all the time is a bit of a pain but I don't know how much oil is going to leak out of here I don't know I'm thinking of putting a drain like Dennis said you could put a drain probably out of here because like a little trough in here maybe you could put one out there so it drains back into the tank I, I don't know or a breather of some sort but that's something else to look at further down the line now this original truck came with plastic shocks uh, which were just filled with grease or whatever. I bought these years ago from a place really cheap. I forget how much they were now but they were dirt cheap. Um, and the way I've got this starting, I've actually got, I don't know if you can see, a little subsea battery there. I've actually got this hooked in together with a starter. So I've got a relay that actually works the glow plug in here. So what happens is, is when you, that's, that's my starter, I'll show you, hang on, let's put this down, that's my starter on there, so when I click that up like that, not only does it spin the engine over, it actually ignites the glow at the same time, so there's no messing about, and it starts instantly, you know, it works, it works well, so that's like another two channels that I've had to use, and then the other thing, I've got on here is this is the brake servo and you know I did have the throttle linked up to the brake servo so it's like normal sort of set up with a brake and the throttle together but the only thing with it is you had to have the throttle stop, stop screwing so when you braked it kept the engine ticking over it didn't shut the carburetor right off but the only problem was that with that is you couldn't 
uh, stop the engine. So when the engine was running, there was no way you could stop it unless you put your finger over here or you tried to lift the body up and get in and you know shut the fuel off or pull the pipe off. It's a lot of fiddling around. And I think like the, the beauty of this model is and this engine is the way it self starts and it seems a shame to sort of ruin it by having to fiddle around trying to stop it. So what I've done is I put my transmitter on the helicopter mode so I can use another servo for the throttle and I can mix them two servos so I can mix the brake separately to the throttle. It gives you a lot of um, options on how to set it up. But what I can do now is I can leave this throttle without the throttle stop screw there being screwed in. So I just leave that loose unwound and this stops at a preset you know, place for the tick over. And I use a throttle hold on my transmitter to actually cut the throttle. So this works the the carburetor, but also because you don't have to use that throttle screw now, you can actually stop it. So you can stop it any time, and then you can restart it. You just click that switch off, and this goes back to where it was at the tick over position, and off you go again. So that's good. So that's another two channels I used up. Then I've got a set of lights on it as well. That's another servo. So, and I've got a um, place for the fan to go into the receiver. So I've got a seven channel receiver in this and I've got every one of them used and I'm having to put the lights on the trim button of where the elevator will be on this transmitter. So to turn the lights on, I just click this up and it puts the lights on because everything else on it is used. This is the reverse one. This is a starter, this is the cup, and then you've got your steering, you've got your throttle and your brake, which is mixed. So you're using a lot of servos, you know. Now, the other thing I had to do is using the Revo, there we go, using the Revo drive shafts, the outputs of these were only like, I think they were four mil. So the Revo, I think is six or five, I can't remember now offhand, but I had to make, some little bushes to go in there um, and I had like flats on them so I had to make like a bush with two flats on the inside um, for these to actually lock onto these diffs. This one is the standard HG one so I didn't have to do anything to that but to adapt the Revo ones to go onto there I had to make these little sort of sleeves. Now I made a tool up you know I made the sleeves and I banged this tool through with the two flats on it and lucky enough, it came out quite a good fit onto these shafts. Now, the suspension, if you use a lot of it, it does tend to hit on, on the bottom of the engine. But you've, you've got a fair way to go before that. This is my brushless speed controller for the starter. Um, as you can see, my catch tank there. You can see it's where it leaks oil out. You know, it's still quite oily. I've got the brushless speed out under the tank. I've got the gear change server on that side, if you can see that, just, just in there. And I've got the brake servo in there. So it's just got independent brake servo to the throttle, just so I can cut the engine. Um, I, I even managed to uh, use the original battery tray in, in the back. I had to move it around because I think the battery was further, further forward and it used to have the motor in this sitting across long ways like that. So it was like a transverse motor across that way. And, it, you know, it was a good crawler. And for what it cost, it was great. But now it's got like a, a lot of character. Um, it sounds awesome. It still climbs over everything, you know. I've got the clutch in there, which I actually made myself. I made a, an alloy clutch just for a little bit of weight on it. And it seemed to work quite well. What have I got on there? I've got a 14... Uh, clutch bell and I think I've got a 38 spur on there and um, you know it changes into second gear straight away um, I'm thinking of just screwing it in a little bit more because sometimes if you're climbing on something it will change because of the more power from the exhaust it will try and change gear you know as it's climbing so you want it to stay in like first gear for a bit longer but you know You've seen the body as well, I think. This is my little body stay. I mean, I've cut the bonnet out and made um, a little bonnet catch on it and stuff like that. I've managed to cut the headlights out of it. And I've put... Hang on. I've managed to 
find some headlights. So I cut these right out and I managed to find some headlight bezels that fitted in there nice. And that, they look like pretty trick really. This is the bonnet I've cut out, you know, I've got the little little bonnet catch on there which, which does a body. I've got the lights on the roof. You can see them, you know, stuff like that, you know. So there's a lot of work into that. But you know, being a Lexian body, it's quite difficult to cut out and you know do stuff like that. But anyway, that's a rundown on the truck. If you want to ask me anything you know else about it, I think it's a good base for this engine. I think it's it's obviously putting a lot of load on the engine, but I think if you gear it low enough, I mean to me it runs really 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 well. And having so much room in there, you know, you can put everything in there and you've got a bit of space and it's quite um you know, it's quite a good design for this engine. But right guys, I'm gonna wrap that up there. I've um I'm gonna do another little video on this one which I've been working on today. I've managed to get the servos in it, uh, made some brackets and bits and bobs like that. I've got the um, steering servo mounted in the original uh, metal there into the uh, tin plate top bit that's on here. Where are we? Yep, it's on there. So this one's coming along. Um, I've got the two servos in there, very similar to the uh, 601. So I'm going to do a little video on that later about the uh, the little mounts I made and bits and pieces like that. But, you know, that's going really well. OK, guys, I'm going to wrap this up and uh, just follow me. Any questions you want to know about it, just let me know and we'll, we'll go from there. So I'll see you later then, guys.